share some more with you today. I started this the first of the year. One of the things that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me very clearly and, and um, that I've been sharing with you in different aspects is about being prepared. And uh, the way the Lord put it to me was this. As the days of John the Baptist were prepare the way of the Lord, he's calling us to be prepared. And, and I believe according to uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, that's our whole spirit and soul and body that we can be prepared. And so I want to share with you today because if you understand what the Lord is saying here, well, I'll just have to, I'll just have to share it, show you this from the Word today. But, but God's speaking something today. And what He's speaking, listen to me, is to walk up right before Him and to walk in His paths for our lives. Now, I want to tell you something. That is not necessarily a popular message. People want to hear stuff that makes them feel good, feel better. But I got to tell you something. Sometimes you got to take medicine to feel better. And the Bible says that God's word is what? Medicine. Yeah. Now, most of you, unless you're my age, don't remember the castor oil days. I mean, I think, that, I think it was considered a cure-all. You didn't dare get sick if you were going to have to take that stuff. But here's the great thing about the Word of God being our medicine. It brings healing to us, but it also brings understanding of what God's life is all about. And we've got to hear that today. John uh, was commanded to preach, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. Prepare the way of the Lord and make his paths straight. That comes from an old uh, oriental custom of, of making a way before the king came. If a king was going to go visit a village, before he went, that road would be smooth and straight wherever he went. And so the Lord is saying that we're got, we've got to be responsible. The Living Bible says, straighten out the paths where he walks. Well, where does he walk? Well, I would dare say he walks in us. In other words, here's what I believe the Lord's saying today. Literally, get your lives ready to receive Jesus, the Messiah. That's what John the Baptist was doing. Well, what was he actually doing? Well, he was preaching a message of repentance and a baptism of repentance. Now, now listen to me. Repentance is still a real word. Somehow we've tried to kind of lose that out of our vocabulary, but it's a real word. Amen. But, but we're not talking about what John was necessarily saying, but, but the, the word is the same because he said, prepare or make ready the way of the Lord. The word their way means the moral straightness, the direct or the right or a course of conduct. Do you know that the Bible does give us instructions about our conduct? Got a few weak amens there, a couple of grunts. But it's true. And, and it, the purpose of it is so that when Jesus comes, there will be a way for him to flow and to minister. And I believe that before Jesus returns, there's going to be a dynamic flow of the Holy Spirit that we've never experienced. The Bible talks about it this way, the former and the latter reign of the Holy Spirit together. And you know, you can go back to the day of Pentecost and see the, the former, and, but there's coming a greater. There's coming a greater. And the Lord is expecting us to be ready. And I believe John's message is good for us today as much as it was for there so that we can make a fit reception before Jesus comes back. Now listen to me today. And uh, we locked the doors again today so you can't leave. <laughs> I actually had a lady one time, I was trying to encourage them to come to church and, 
And, um, and uh, she told me, she said, well, I'm not coming there. And I said, why? And she said, because I heard you locked the doors. <laughs> so so I, 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 had a, I stuck an old key in my pocket. And the next time I saw them, I walked over there and I handed her that key. And I said, here's the key. You can get out anytime you want. <laughs> you don't have any excuse now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there's a true path that we've got to be ready for the return of Jesus. Listen, I think somehow we've gotten the idea and, and you know that we're just going to live like we want to live, kind of go to church, worship the Lord on Sunday, read our Bibles every once in a while, pray every once in a while, and, and when Jesus comes back, he's just going to take us out. But I want to tell you something. There is a great harvest coming before Jesus comes back. The Bible teaches that implicitly, clearly, that there will be a harvest. Well, what about the falling away? Well, I don't have time to get into it, but I want to tell you something. God didn't invest, listen to me, God did not invest his son in a few meager people. He gave his son for the world. And he wants a harvest. And I believe we're going to see it. I'm convinced we're going to see it in my lifetime. I don't know about you, but me. Amen. So here's the thing that you've got to understand about being prepared, okay? And I'm going to talk to you about this. And this is a word that's not used very often in church anymore, but it should be heard a lot more. In 1 Peter chapter 1, I'm going to begin in verse 15, and I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Bible, so I want you to listen. But as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves also be holy, in all your conduct and manner of living. Not one amen. Yeah. The Bible says that. Yeah, that's talking about you and I. It says, as the one who called you is holy, you yourselves be holy in all your conduct and your manner of living. So, why? Because God wants to use you. So just hang with me. Well, you know the Lord will use anybody. No, He won't. No, He'll clean them up first. Oh, He may use somebody for a purpose. God did that. Well, let me just show, tell you this, and you'll see whether you want to be one of these or not. Uh, God... God um, Used, used uh, Pharaoh. You want to be Pharaoh? God used Moses. Well, I'd rather be Moses. Well, I don't blame you. So, you, you know, God can use people, but, but I'm talking about for his purposes, for his plans to flow through you, to minister through you and use you uh, in, the, in the days to come. You've got to understand something. It says, you shall be holy for I am holy. Now, Listen to me today because holiness is not a doctrinal statement. Well, we believe in holiness. Well, I'm glad if you're a Christian, you should believe in holiness. You should be making up your mind how you're going to live your life. I am not giving out keys today. <laughs> Listen to what the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. Listen to this. If, you, if indeed you have heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct. He's talking to Christians. Get rid of your former conduct. The old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you become a new creature in Christ, but it's your responsibility to put off the old and put on the new. Doesn't happen overnight. It's called transformation. But it's real. And I used to struggle with this. Lord, what is holiness? You know, I mean, you can 
try to be holy. And, you know, that's what the Pharisees were trying to do by walking in all the law and being pious and, and really using it against everybody else. That's not holiness. Holiness is personal. And one, I, I'll never forget this. This happened to me many years ago, and I'd been praying about it, didn't understand it. One night I was sound asleep, and the Holy Spirit woke me up, and I heard the Spirit of God say, you want to know what holiness is? Yes, sir. And I got up out of my bed. Actually, we, it was when we were living at the church, which is the office building now, back in the early 80s. And I got up, and I went in my study, and I said, I'm ready, Lord. And this is what the Lord told me, and this is going to help you today. The holiness is, is, is threefold. It's spirit, soul, and body. Holiness is not an attitude. Holiness is a responsibility. First of all, it is a, it is a spiritual responsibility, and holiness is integrity of heart. It means you don't violate your conscience toward God, what you know is right toward God. You live a, a, a life that is a, a, a integrity in your heart. It's not something you just do for outward appearance. It's something you do whether anybody ever sees you or not because it comes from your heart. You, listen to me. It is a protecting your spirit from contamination. Protecting your spirit from contamination. Let me tell you something. This world is contaminated. Now, Paul was very clear. He said, you have to use the world, don't abuse the world. He said, you have to walk in the world and you have to be around people of the world. You can't separate yourself out uh, from the world. You can't do that. That's not, what, that's not our purpose. We're supposed to be light to the world. Our lives should shine toward the world, okay? But you have to protect your spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says this. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, listen to this, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You've got to protect your spirit. You can't just expose yourself to anything. You can't just go watch anything you want to watch and think it's okay. No, you cannot. Well, what can I watch and what can I watch? I'm not telling you. It's the integrity of your heart that's at stake, not mine. I don't know how many movies Becky and I have walked out of thinking they were one thing and realizing, wait a minute, we don't want to be exposed to this. I'm not bragging on me. I'm not telling you. I'm just, I just want you to understand. You've got to be sensitive to protect your spirit. So you have to be careful. I had a friend many years ago in the ministry and, and uh, I, I'll never forget. I still see where we were standing. He was talking about, you know, this movie he'd gone to and I, I'm thinking, man, that is an R almost x-rated movie I said and I said to him I said man isn't that an r-rated movie he said oh that stuff doesn't bother me I just watch it and that stuff just goes right over my head no it went right into his heart because not many years later he committed adultery you start listen to me you have you have and it's your integrity that's at stake not with man with God Aren't you glad you came to church today? I'm glad you came. So it's integrity of heart. You want to know more about this? Come back Wednesday night. We'll see who comes. You know. I don't want to know about that. Yeah, you need to. The second thing that, it, that, that holiness is, is soundness of mind. Soundness and purity of your mind and your emotions. Isn't it interesting that the Bible that Paul wrote and said, let me tell you what to think. Where is that in the Bible? You go find it for yourself. I'm not telling you. Read Philippians. You'll find it. Tells you what. It says, think on these things. Your emotions. Listen, you're responsible. There is a responsibility for your emotions. How you live your life. I, I, I want to tell you, I have failed in that area before, and, and it's embarrassing where I, where I let 
the world dictate to me my emotions rather than allowing God to dictate my emotions. My wife almost passed out one time. I, we were getting off an airplane and this guy was trying to get off first and he just pushed Becky out of the way. Shouldn't have done it. I stepped over in front of him and he wanted to get by me and I said, you just wait. And he, he made a few choice words to me. And I said, when we get off this airplane, I'm gonna kick your butt. And I, you can ask Becky, I chased him off until he got out of the, until he got, we were making a transfer, he was leaving, he left. I was embarrassed by that. I'm not telling you you're gonna be perfect, but listen, we're responsible for our souls, for our mind, our will, our emotions. And we have the tools to do what's right. Please don't take that as your example of doing right, because it wasn't. <laughs> I just want you to understand, listen, we're not perfect, but, but, but I never did that again. Of course, nobody ever pushed her around again either. But, <laughs> but the point is, we're responsible. We're responsible for what we think. I, I get thoughts in my mind all the time that are not right, that are impure. They'll float through but I don't let them stay. I heard, I heard a preacher one time say, just because a bird flies over your head doesn't mean he's got to make a nest. You can't just think anything you want to think and think it's okay. You're mistaken. And the third thing is this. We're talking about holiness, okay? The third thing is a disciplined and self-controlled body. Let me just tell you something. Paul, the great apostle, said, I beat my body. I buffet my body. I don't let my body do what it wants to do because I don't want to come down the road and realize that here I've been here this whole time and I don't make it. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Acceptable to God. That's holiness. It's not about, well, in a sense, it's about what you dress because you don't want to dress like, you know, well, I don't want to get into that. But, <laughs> but while I'm at it, because you, listen, you don't know where somebody is. I remember year, many years ago, we had a lady come to our church and she'd sit on the front row, about where Robert's sitting right now. <laughs> she'd sit on the front row, and, and she, her dress was up to here, and her blouse was down to here. And I, I mean, that's back when we had the choir. And I'm telling you, all the ladies in the choir, they were upset. Well, you try preaching to that. And, and uh, I mean, and I understand, I understand. It didn't look good. And, and uh, you need to talk to her, you need to talk to her. And I said, Lord, what do I do about this? And the Lord said, leave her alone, I'll take care of her. After a couple of weeks, the Spirit of God came on her and touched her life and changed her. She wasn't even saved. She was just searching. She got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. And she started coming back and she was like a totally different woman. Nobody had to tell her. We used to have a guy who used to come in gym shorts. Back in the day when gym shorts were gym shorts. You know. And, 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 and a t-shirt. Just I think he was doing it just to see who would say something. But you know what? God dealt with him about that. I, I didn't have to do it. Now, I understand there are limits to that and, and there, there, there are other things involved. But my point is, it's your responsibility to take care of your body. Not, ju not just your physical appearance, but, but the, the way you live. It's your only body you got. Present it to God as a living sacrifice and then listen to what he says. My goodness, it got quiet in here. 
I'm really already gone way past what I had any business talking about. But let's, let's go on, all right? So here's the thing I want you to hear today, okay? And listen to this, because I want you to be prepared, okay? You're never going to be perfect, okay? Never going to be perfect. Because, because you're living, you, you, you live in a lot of situations, but you live in a carnal world. Amen. Linda still bakes strawberry pie. I mean, strawberry cake. And brings it to me. Anyway. So, but my point is, what are you trying to do? What, what's your desire? Because here's what I want you to hear. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Listen to what verse 6 says. Now listen. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light, y'all listen to me, of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You got something in you. Something powerful, something wonderful lives in you. We have, and now listen to the next verse. And we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God's trusted us with his glory, with the presence of his Holy Spirit, with his son in earthen vessels. Now remember that. It's a treasure. It's a treasure that lives in us. We're responsible for, the, for that treasure. Why did God do that? We'll read the rest of that verse 7. That the power of God may uh, be, that the power may be of God and not of us. We have the responsibility to keep ourselves. The treasures of life, of God's life, is in us. It's in it. If you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, it's in you. Now listen to me. Don't ruin the treasure's reputation in your life by how you're living. Now I can tell you right now, if you lived a perfect life, you'd still be persecuted by the world because they don't like that life. If you don't believe me, go read about Jesus. But the po- that's not the point. The point is it's our responsibility to protect that treasure on the inside of us. Our goal should be constantly doing things to make sure that we don't tank the treasure. So we're living in a day of preparation. For the end of the age. And God wants us prepared. But, you, but, but I want to tell you, he wants us prepared for the harvest fields. He wants us prepared for more than ourselves. If you think this is all about you, you're mistaken. So listen to the word of God here in 2 Timothy chapter, chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Listen to this. Therefore, if anyone, and I'm going to come back to this, so hang with me. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, and we're going to find out what that is, he will be a vessel for honor. Sanctified, that word is not a, it means separated, set apart. Sanctified and, you ready for this? Useful for the master. Prepared, you ready? For every good work. He wants us to be vessels. Prepared for good works. He wants us to be ready, useful, profitable for good works. That word there, works, is the word deeds and acts. And he wants us to be prepared. But I want to tell you something. A lot of people have got a mistaken thought about this because the act of preparation isn't what you think it is. It's not a matter of being in the right place at the right time. 
It's not a matter of knowledge and know-how. It's a matter of cleansing. It's a matter of purity. It's a matter of making sure that you are protecting that treasure in your life, spirit, soul, and body of being a fit vessel. Why? Because God wants to flow through you that the excellency of the power may be of Him. And that comes by your life. And protecting that treasure in your life, holiness is not about, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this. Holiness is about protecting the treasure in life and finding out those things that will corrupt the treasure being purposeful in your life. That's where the preparation comes from. That's what God's wanting us to do. Y'all still with me? He wants us to be a fit vessel that the power can flow through. Now, I want you to listen to this very carefully. You cannot be deceived by current conditions in the body of Christ. We have to look at the Word of God to find out how to prepare. Whatever everyone else is doing it. I used to go to Australia quite a bit and preach and and, and um, uh, a group of ministers down there, and in fact, it's, it's almost kind of rampant down there. You know, they, they just figured out it was okay to drink and drink wine. And it, it was okay. God doesn't care. Jesus, you know, he made wine at the, at the wedding. It's okay to drink. And, 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 um, and, and I went down there, you know, and I, I was sitting with this bunch of pastors at lunch one day. And, and you know, they were going to order their Wine, but since I was the American, you know, they thought they better ask me first. And they said, do you mind if we order wine with our meal? And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> well, and they want to argue with me about it. And I said, you asked me and I told you. You do what you want to do. You know that almost every one of those pastors that were sitting at that table are no longer in ministry? I'm not pointing my finger at anybody like I'm holier than they are. I've drank drunk wine before. <laughs> but my point is, listen, it's not profitable. It's not profitable. It's not something that will produce anything in your life but heartache and trouble. Y'all still with me? So you can't go by what everybody else does. Well, they're getting away with it. Go read Psalm 37. You'll find out what that's all about. Nothing's happening to them. Listen, I I don't want anybody hurt. I don't want to be hurt. I don't want things in my life that are going to hurt me. I don't, want to, I don't want to have anything in my life. Listen to me. I don't want anything in my life. And I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to make that statement at all. I don't want things in my life that are going to ruin my reputation for the treasure that's on the inside of me. Ruin the rep, really not even my reputation, the reputation of the treasure. Well, I thought you were a Christian. See, listen, the the world knows they'll get you to act like them. And then when you do, they'll say, I thought you were a Christian. I've told this story many times, but one of my fraternity brothers in college, Jimmy Dish. How many of you have heard me tell about Jimmy Dish? Jimmy Dish was a real Christian. I don't know why he was in a fraternity. There is nothing in a fraternity well, I guess there is some brotherhood there. I mean, I've still got friends from, from those days. But, but, but um, I, I, I made it my, one of my life missions to be able to say to him, I thought you were a Christian. And I never could do it. I tried my best. The world wants to do that. So it's not about other people. It's not about other Christians. You better know from the Word of God what God's Word says. 
about stuff. You better listen to your own conscience. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't do something just to be doing it. Everybody still with me? So listen to what Paul said, and I'm, I'm going to jump around in these scriptures in 2 Timothy 2 so you can go read it on your own sometime. Listen to verse 15 of chapter 2. Paul's talking to Timothy. He said, be diligent to present yourself approved of God. Isn't it interesting that if you can be approved, guess what else? You can be disapproved. Well, God loves everybody. You can be disapproved. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now listen to this. This is just a little blip here. This is not everything. But listen to this. Shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Let me just tell you. There are things that if you don't get away from them, it'll just make things worse. It will increase the ungodliness. It won't increase the godliness. It'll get worse. But I'm a Christian, I know. I'm, I, that's why I'm talking to you today. In fact, he goes on to talk about the fact that some have already gone too far. Hymenaeus Hymen and uh, Philetus have gone too far. And, and not only that, they've subverted the faith of others. How'd you like to be the one that has to talk to Jesus about the fact that you didn't behave, you didn't do right, your conduct wasn't what it ought to be, and now all of a sudden you're affecting other people and you're going to have to answer for them. Can I tell you another story? Years ago, uh, there was a situation that had happened here in town um, where it, it, it's, it's a long, it was just a sordid affair, a sordid Christian affair. Um, and I was talking to another minister at lunch one day because I wanted to know what happened. You said, why would you want to know? Well, because I'd been praying, but I wanted to know what happened. Probably had no business knowing what happened. We don't need to know everything. Okay. And while I'm talking, he's, he's doing this. Well, come to find out, the woman, who was a young woman, by the way, her parents were sitting at the next table, and they were listening to my conversation. And he leaned over to me and he said, that's the parents. Now, now, now listen to me. It broke my heart that I'd been so foolish. I'm not bragging on me. This is embarrassing to tell you this. It's a life truth, though. I got up out of my chair. I went over to their table, and I got on my knees in the restaurant, and I begged them to forgive me. I don't know whether they did or not. They didn't say a whole lot to me, and I don't blame them. But I was about to mess up the reputation of the treasure by my actions, and I begged them to forgive me. I hope they did. They nodded like they did, you know, but they were already hurting because of their daughter. You don't want to, you don't want to ruin the, the, the treasure in your life. I don't want to ever think that I, that I actually was responsible from somebody, for somebody else to hinder their faith. Have I? I don't know. If I have, I don't know it, but it's possible. And, and let me just so you'll know these two that I was talking about, Hymenaeus and his friend, uh, they, were, they had been in the church. They were part of the church. Okay. So you, you have to understand where I'm coming from. That treasure in you is so valuable. And we have to protect it because God wants to use us. You wonder one of the reasons that that um, God used Billy Graham like he did. Do you know there were other men that came out of, of uh, school at the same time as him, and, and uh, he was not even picked to be one of the ones that would ever do anything for God. The other two guys were.
But when he started, when he got his first team together, he sat down and he, sat, he laid out some parameters. He said, I'll never be alone with a woman. And he laid out all these parameters. I'll never be in a hotel, you know, that I don't have uh, other men around me to help me. He, he laid out parameters of what he was going to do because he wanted to protect the treasure. One of those men that was with him turned against God and the other one was caught in immorality. And I may have those stories a little off, but that's basically what, it, what happened. God wants to use you. He wants you to be a vessel, but you got to be prepared. Well, I'm too, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy. Well, that's the problem. You're not understanding the value, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But let me show you this. Let me show you something that Paul said to Timothy about this, okay? In verse 19 of 2 Timothy 2, he said, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Here are two great axioms you can live by, okay? Paul gives us two great axioms you can live by. The first one is, the Lord knows those who are his. I don't know about you, but that encourages me that the Lord knows me. I'm one of his and he knows me. Not only does he know me, but it says he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. God, God is in me to work in me both the will and the do of his good pleasure. I pray that all the time. Lord, create in me both the will and the desire to do of your good pleasure. Amen. Work in me. And I found out that because God knows me and I'm his, that uh, he'll maintain my right and my cause. No weapon formed against me will prosper. Why? Because he knows me. All right. But now listen, because the other axiom is this. We like that one. How many of you like that one? Okay. The Lord knows those who are his and, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I thank God he knows me, but I want to tell you something. The other part of that's just as critical in your life that you depart from iniquity. It's interesting because sin and iniquity are two different words. Sin is basically a violation of the law. Iniquity is something that gets in you. Most of the time, iniquity is inherent perversity. Did you notice when you got saved that you still had stuff? That's called iniquity. You've got to depart from it. I've told this story many times, but when I got saved, I, I, I was a habitual liar. I, I hate to say that. I mean, I'm exposing myself this morning, but that was a way long time ago. But, but the point is, I was. I just, I mean, to be honest with you, I, that's funny. And to be honest with you, I was a liar, you know. <laughs> but... Back in those days, I would, I would tell you a lie because it was more fun than tell you the truth. Just perverted. Well, when I got saved, that still started coming out of me. And listen, I didn't like it because I knew it wasn't right. And I prayed. And I said, God, what do I do about that? I, I'm not a liar anymore. That's not who I am. I'm not going to live that way. Lord, you got to help me. You got to help me. What do I do? And here's what the Lord said to me. I mean, the Holy Spirit just brought this up in my spirit. Every time you say that, just stop right there and say, I'm sorry, that was a lie. It don't take you long to get something out of you when you do that. <laughs> and it didn't take me long. But there's, there's something in man, even after you get saved, that you've got to deal with those things in your life. You have to depart from iniquity, from unjust unrighteousness or, and, or not doing right. So that means conduct is important. Yes. Yes. 
So listen, let's back up now to verse 20 and listen to what, listen to what Paul told Timothy here. Listen to this, verse 20. In a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay and some for honor and some for dishonor. Yeah, that's me. I'm just one of those old clay pots. I'm one of those old wooden pots. Then you're worthless. Because that's not what, that's, that scripture's not giving you the option of being what you want to be. That option is trying to show you the difference between being a vessel God can use and one who can't be used. <clears throat> Amen. You choose the higher or the lower in your life. Listen to the next verse. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, that's the dishonorable, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master's work, prepared for every good work. Whose job is that? Whose responsibility is that? It's ours. Now listen to me. Thank God we don't have to do it on our own. We have the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to live the life God wants. God would never tell us to do that if we couldn't do it. So it says, listen, what do you, the bottom line is it's value. What do you honor? That's where it is. Honor is the value you place on something. Well, what value do you place on what God's done in your life? What's in your life? What's the value of it? That's where the honor is. If you don't value it enough to, to, to pay attention to how you're living your life, then you're being dishonorable. If your theology is, well, I can do what I want to do. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves you enough to send me today to tell you the truth. I want to be an honorable vessel. Do you notice I'm not telling you the do's and don'ts of that? Because that's your responsibility. The Holy Spirit working in you. I know you'd like to have that, but I'm telling you, if I did, it'd be the law. And I'm not going to put you under the law. The Holy Spirit's got to be the one that tells you how you protect your spirit. I can't tell you how many times. I, it, it'd be in the thousands of times since I've been saved that I've been doing something or listening to something or, or in a particular situation and the Holy Spirit said, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't even get close to that. You've got to know that. You want God to use you. You want to be a vessel of honor separated for the master's use. That's what he's after. And the closer we come to Jesus' return, the more desperate I believe he is to get us in a place where he can use us. Well, God will use anybody. Listen to me. That's not what the Bible says. What does that mean? It means we cleanse and purge ourselves so we can be prepared. So we can get rid of the dishonor, the unrighteousness, and we can value what's on the inside of us, that treasure that is ours, that lives in us. You've got to protect that treasure in your life. Let me read you another scripture. I'm just about finished, but listen to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Listen to what it says. Verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, I know I've had, I've had, um, I, I've had actually had people tell me that means my, my husband isn't a believer. I can get a divorce because he's not a believer. That's not true. That's not what the Bible says. That's not what that's talking about. It's talking about your everyday relationship. Your, and look, we all have to work around and be around unbelievers. But being connected with them is a whole different ball game. 
Okay. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with the devil? Or what part has a believer with unbelievers? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. That's your treasure. And God has said, how many of you believe God speaks? God has said, I will dwell in them, walk among them. I will be their God. They shall be my people. Therefore, he's in us. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Y'all still here? Don't touch what's unclean and I will receive you. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord of hosts. So where are your associations? Now, please, I understand. Listen, I understand that we have to be around darkness, but you don't have to participate with darkness. You can be a light in darkness. I'm just about finished, but I, did, I, 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 I thought about this, and you know, I, I tell you I'm on Facebook, right? Why am I on Facebook? To watch you. Okay. I, I learn a lot. Amen. I do. I learn a lot. <clears throat> Gives me a lot of preaching material, but I can't use most of it. But, <laughs> but I, I, I noticed after the Grammys, okay, how many Christian people, see, you know what happened. Why do you know? Facebook, yeah. But, but the point is, I, I notice all these people posting about the Grammys and, uh, and about all the devil worship at the Grammys. Well, what do you think's been going on for years at the Grammys? Are you surprised that all of a sudden there's a manifestation of it? I'm amazed at these people that come on stage and they don't have on enough clothes to go to bed in. And they're giving God the glory. Yeah, Right. You're showing your glory. <laughs> but I'm amazed at how many people, I, I wonder how many people watched it. I'm not pointing my finger at you. I'm not trying to, I'm just telling you. Oh, I'm appalled at that. Why would you be appalled at the world acting like the world? I can't, listen, I'm not trying to point my finger today. What I'm trying to get you to do is listen to the Holy Spirit. Because if you do, I'm going to tell you something. He will, he will radically change the way you are. He lives in you and he wants that treasure protected. He wants it protected. He wants the life of God in you protected. And, and you've got to understand that. And if you do, it's amazing how God will use you. You want to be prepared? Because I'm telling you, before he comes back, I'm convinced he's going to use every vessel that he can. But don't kid yourself into thinking you can live like you want to. And well, when it comes time, he'll use me. No, you have to be ready. You have to be ready. And this is how you get ready. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's got the patent on how to do this. It's between you and God. But I want to tell you something. Don't kid yourself into thinking, well, I'm all right. Why are you all right? Well, look at them. Look at them. That has nothing to do with it. Don't look at me. Look at what God's Word says. That's where your sincerity will pay dividends. If you just be obedient and be willing to obey God. Last scripture, 1 John 1, 9, because we all need this. If we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I use that scripture, folks. I don't know whether you do, but I use that scripture because I want to be clean. Doesn't mean that I'm terrified that if I miss something that God's going to hammer me. That's not the point. The point is I want to be a vessel that can be used. I want God to use me. I want the Holy Spirit to flow through me. I want God's presence to be revealed. I want the anointing of God to, to flow. I, I, I don't care if people don't like that. That's their problem. Well, I, I'm going I'm to lose some of my friends. They're not your friends. They may be acquaintances and they may call you friends. They may even be Facebook friends or Twitter friends or whatever. Don't kid yourself. They'll rip your heart out if they're not serving God. Wow. All right. Listen to me carefully. Dude, I'm not trying to point my finger at anybody other than myself. God wants vessels he can use. And there are requirements. Go read 2 Timothy chapter 2. Let it speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. And be ready to be used for God. Father, I pray right now over every person under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray that you stir their hearts to be vessels, to be vessels that can be used. Father, we know we're not perfect. We know we've not accomplished the perfection that we'll see in heaven. But Lord, you give us the command. And I pray right now that as you work in our lives, by the power of your Holy Spirit. By the power of your Holy Spirit. You give us the strength to do what we need to do, to be what you want us to be, regardless of what any person says. And we give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life or you've been away from God, I'm not going to pray with you right now. I want you to pray. I want you to, to understand this is about the Holy Spirit working in you and for you today. But, but there are things you can do. We, we have people that will pray with you. And, we're, and, and uh, Melissa's going to come and share with you what you can do to make another step in your life. But I want to challenge you today. Listen to me. Don't stay the same. I believe the Holy Spirit's working. I see, I see down the road here in the short near future some things happening that'll take our breath away. But it'll be so awesome for the kingdom of God if we just let it work. Amen. Amen. Melissa, come on, sweetie. Amen. What a rich word. I know some of you are thinking maybe, I want to be a vessel, God. I want to be a vessel that you can use in our homes, in our communities, in our families. I want to prepare the way for you to come back. And if you'd like to take the next steps, just take that card from the seat back in front of you, fill it out and just drop it in one of the buckets on your way out so that we can connect with you and so that we can help you be all that you want to be in God. We can help you be all that God wants you to be in Him. Amen? There are also people in the lobbies that are prepared to help you sign up for, for life groups. Another way to connect so please stop by those tables. I think we have 35 life groups. Isn't that awesome? Amen. So uh, if there is nothing else, 
you are dismissed. <laughs>